right, everyone. Welcome back into another NFL DFS video. Going to be breaking down the Thursday night showdown game between the Denver Broncos and the New Orleans Saints. Now, as always, I like to start off with a game preview, and we're just going to flip the average here for this game because this is going to be one of the lowest scoring games on the slate. 37 points is what it's at right now. Uh, Minus two points. Uh, Denver's actually favored to win in this game, which a little bit surprised by that. But given the way that the Saints have been playing lately, maybe warranted. I don't. I don't know. The Broncos, I, the way that they're three and three is pretty crazy because they have not played well. Bo Nix has not played well, although he is making like popping up on the box score. If you're not watching it, you're like, oh, he's he's not too bad. He's scrambling a what around well, but that's that's kind of it. Um, I actually thought like Spencer Rather actually looked a little bit better. Honestly, uh, in terms of just playing the quarterback position, but Bo Nix is definitely settling in to an NFL quarterback, maybe even a starting NFL quarterback. He, he's starting to look pretty decent. I know Colin Coward, if you guys follow him, just loves Bo Nix. See, I, I'm not there yet with him, but he is improving each and every game. That's the takeaway. And it, it is a short week for two young quarterbacks. How will they handle this? And I say two young quarterbacks. I am expecting Spencer Rattler to still start now. Uh, the Saints do have a long list of players that could potentially sit in this game. I do expect Derek Carr to sit in this game still. Uh, Rattler, for what it's worth, guys, started off kind of rattled, honestly. Uh, the second snap of the game, he ends up like fumbling the snap and just losing five yards on it. Kind of terrible. Uh, and then, you know, kind of early on, I think it was the second drive then, missed Bub memes on an easy pitch and catch. Did settle in pretty well throughout the game as well. I was impressed. I thought rather actually looked better than really I expected. Bob Memes had himself a pretty good game there as well. The The issue that I have with Spencer Rattler in that game is the fact that a lot of his success was from kind of just him rolling out, whether it be on a play action or a boot, kind of getting defenders to go one way and coming back another. I kind of worry that now that the Denver Broncos have film on how they're going to potentially play Rattler, that the Broncos can end up just feasting against him. And the Denver Broncos are one of the best defenses, if not the best defenses in the league, at stopping opposing quarterback production. That being said, Justin Herbert just came in and had his best game of the season thus far. So we'll see. It's a weird balancing act against a Thursday night game. So honestly, one of the more fun games, <laughs> just because there's lots of unknowns in this game. Let's go ahead and take a peek at the snap counts for both teams. And a big thing here is that uh, Alvin Kamara has been playing much more of a traditional running back role, not really being uh, phased out of the offense really at all. And I do think that's a lot due to Taysom Hill being out as well. So um, I would only elevate uh, Alvin Kamara as a play if Taysom Hill is out. Taysom Hill has been part of the reason function. I think it's part of the reason as to why the offense looks so good as well at the start of the season. So if Taysom Hill's out again, again, I think that helps out Alvin Kamara, but also helps out uh, the tight ends. Jawan Johnson actually looked pretty good uh, playing 77% of the snaps. They have been doing some two tight end sets, as we can see here. Not a big takeaway there. Honestly, they're both going to be fine plays in DFS. Let's jump on into the receiver position. And one of the interesting things, Bub Memes instantly played 71% of the snaps. I'm not sure how much of that was because of Chris Olave being injured or by design. And I do think there is something to like the backup, backup connection. You have two players that practice together, get all the reps together. There's going to be much more of a connection there. And Bub Memes, honestly, extremely impressive in this game. I was shocked at how solid he looked. Now, that being said, I thought Tipton looked pretty decent as well uh, in that uh, previous game as well. His role is still going to be there as well. Uh, given the fact that it's a short week, I'm not expecting Chris Olave to play. Uh, so we might be looking at a decent amount of Bub Memes in this game. And then looking at the Denver Broncos and their snap counts, guys, kind of crazy from the receiver position. Uh, Devon Valley, if you guys have followed the channel, you know I've kind of hyped him up as like a best ball pick. I was kind of telling people to be on him. Already gotten two starts out of him in a bunch of best ball drafts, which is crazy because he's only played twice. <laughs> okay, he's played twice. Uh, in week one, 49% of the snaps led the team in targets. In uh, last week's game, 62% of the snaps. Most of his production came uh, really on the last drive, a lot of it did. Troy Franklin was actually the one that kind of stood out uh, for the whole team at the, in the first half. Uh, and he's had opportunities to kind of be something, and he just keeps making mistakes. I don't know if it's mental. I don't know if he has the full playbook down, uh, but he's just clearly making too many mistakes. He looks good, though. It wouldn't be surprising to see him have a good game. Uh, but Cortland Sutton, <laughs> Cortland Sutton looked, looked great, guys, especially in the second half, had... I mean, this guy's always making great end zone 
catches. I would love to see him with a good quarterback. I really would. And maybe maybe Bo Nix will become a good one, but he continues to look good. He actually had uh, like a 30-yard, maybe 40-yard uh, reception called back on a hold. It was the correct call, but it was like a fraction, a fraction away in terms of timing from the lineman not having to hold. Like it was Bo Nix is, you know, gearing up to make the pass. Lyman realizes he's beat, beat, grabs the defender. And it was just a split second away from the lineman not having to do that. And then Gordon Sutton having a big gain. My biggest takeaway from that game, I know Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense isn't that good, but the offense didn't look completely lost in the passing game. There were some open lanes in the sense that uh, Sean Payton wants them to be there. A little bit too much scrambling around from Bo Nix, but he looked he looked good doing. He's clearly athletic. Had a great run, actually. One of the best quarterback scrambles of the year. Lucas Kroll ended up playing sixty percent of the snaps in that game. Uh, no tight end has really stood out to me. You know, we can kind of punt to all of them, uh, but Kroll is probably going to be the one we're defaulting to. Running back wise, Javante Williams did not look good in that game. He didn't look bad. I don't want to say, but <laughs> in comparison to Sean Tucker, Ray Davis. Heck, Emmanuel Wilson, all these like backup running backs that have looked good. Man, Javante Williams like looked so much worse than them. And I don't even think Javante's a bad back, but there was one run that like stood out to me. He uh he he realizes the the cut lanes to the outside. He should have done a jump cut. He does this weird spin move and then he couldn't get to the edge. Like one, he wasn't fast enough to two, he does a weird spin move. Heck, I think if you put Jaleel McLaughlin in that spot, he probably gets there. McLaughlin looked fine. I wouldn't be surprised to actually see a little bit more McLaughlin, but it was nice to see Javante Williams get more and more work in that game. At least if they, at least they can commit to a running back, that would be huge for us. And so, guys, with this slate, it's going to be extremely easy to make a good build or make a build based off of how you see this game going. I think a decent bet is a bet on the Saints defense continuing to look kind of lost defensively. Now, you could argue, all right, they went against the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. That's part of the reason. But they made Juju Smith-Schuster look like Rasheed Rice, pretty much, you know, like that's crazy. Juju hasn't done anything in a long time. Uh, Travis Kelsey didn't look washed as well. So like it, it, like they're making maybe players look better than they are. We'll see. And then obviously last week, Tampa Bay, they made some big plays. Like, don't get me wrong. That was a fun game with Tampa Bay. It's really tough to kind of hate on the defense in that game because it was just good offense versus good defense, it seemed like, but they still gave up a lot of production to Baker Mayfield. Uh, they caused a lot of turnovers. And maybe we see that out of Bo Nix. Um, is is scrambling a lot. Again, it looked pretty impressive <laughs> in the game. There is a stupid rush where he is. Uh, he points. It's twenty to zero. He has this awesome run. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, watch the clip. He points back at the defender during the play. It's like, dude, you're down twenty to zero. You guys are clearly going to lose. Like, what are you doing? Uh, that was funny. Uh, but he's going to be a solid play. I think I, I like him at that price tag. Uh, Cortland Sun continues to look impressive. The thing that sucks with Corn Sun, he is a little bit touchdown dependent, even though he is getting a bunch of targets. Uh, I do like Corn Sun. I, I'm happy to pay up for him. Uh, Javante Williams does get a good matchup. It wouldn't be surprising to see him have a decent game, but that would have to be due to uh, him getting a lot of receptions in the passing game. Uh, Jalen McLaughlin, again, I could see getting a little bit more work, but where we are really concentrating here with the Denver Broncos is looking at the value. So we got Devon Valet there, who I really like, guys, had... Six targets in that game, four receptions. Again, that came at the end of the game. Maybe gets a little bit more acclimated earlier on in this game. Played more snaps than he did in week one. In week one, ended up with eight receptions, eight targets, not that many yards. And again, this offense looked much better, I would say, from week one. Like Chargers, much more difficult defense compared to the Seahawks, and they looked much better last week, I would say. So Valet is someone I'll begin to... I don't think I want to play like this many Denver Broncos, but Troy Franklin... He should have had a better game. Like he should have. I know he caught the touchdown, but I, I don't mind getting to him as well. So really just what I'm looking at here is probably attacking the passing game and still getting to Bo Nix from there. And, and, and guys, I will say both defenses are firmly going to be in play. Kickers are going to be in play as well. It's going to be that same slate again. Uh, looking at the Saints now, Alvin Kamara, assuming he plays, we're going to want to play him. He looks great, continues to look great. Got a bunch of targets in that game still, uh, even with a different quarterback there. So he still has a nice floor in the receiving department. Would have wished he would have got a little bit um, better rushing attempts, I would say, in that game. But I think they'll continue to find ways to get him the football and get him involved. I'm happy to get there. 
Again, I'm sort of expecting Chris Olave to sit in this game. Rashid Shahid, I do expect to play, but we'll see. Wasn't a participant in Tuesday's practice. That could just be a maintenance thing. That's kind of what I expect right now. But if he sits, we're easily looking at Bub Memes to be one of the better value plays on the slate. Denver's defense, again, was fine. Has been great throughout the season. Not terrible last week, but definitely not as good as they were previously. I, I, I think that's more of a testament to Justin Herbert looking good. So um happy to play some like bub memes at this price tag but look at this build like we got a pretty solid build going here with still a decent amount of salary left over heck we could play troy franklin from denver and, and feel kind of okay with it but shahid i'm fine with his touchdown it was actually a return for a touchdown last week so that kind of boost his production wasn't able to get anything going Derek carr and him have good chemistry maybe that didn't carry over with spencer rather tough to say for sure i will say Jawan jennings sorry not Jawan. <laughs> Jawan johnson does feel a little bit priced up. I know he's been solid over the past two games and having pretty solid production over the last two games, but that does feel a little bit too high price for me. Like I would almost rather play one of the kickers or one of the DSTs than pay up for him at that price tag. And so for this specific build, I don't know if we want to play Corton Sutton in the captain build. Like let's just put him in the flex. And kind of in this scenario where we're betting on valet to play and, and kind of keep that 60% roll, I'm kind of okay with playing him in the captain spot, but that's because that's kind of what we're betting on. If you want to go Troy Franklin there a little bit, you can. I'm kind of okay with that as well. But that then opens up a lot. I kind of expect Taysom Hill to sit in this game if he doesn't. Again, that that hurts Kamara a little bit. Maybe that helps out the offense as a whole, but obviously that's not going to help out Rattler. Um, this I'd be fine with going Denver Broncos DST here with Bo Nix. Like, it probably correlates a little bit there where, yeah, I'm kind of okay with this. This is fine. I think this is a good starting point. I do. So let's go ahead and jump into the 95 lineup builder, see what that's telling us in terms of what we should expect for this slate. And again, guys, this is extremely early. We look at some of the projections like it, it just depends on kind of who plays and whatnot. Obviously, that's going to change a lot. But let's just go ahead and round up here. We need to give it two data points to go off of. So we're going to do that here. We're going to round up and just see what it tells us is kind of the best lineup here. See how that compares to the lineup I just showed you guys again going to be changing uh, throughout the week. It's it's early. I'm doing this video on Tuesday, but right now, <laughs> all right, kind of funny. It, it makes sense a little bit. Bo Nix, Alvin Kamar, Broncos D, Devon Valet, which again, I like Saints D and Spencer Rattler. I could see that. I could see that being the optimal build. Now, this is what looked like would happen on Monday night, and that was not the case. Uh, I was on the second tier of lineups Monday night in terms of having a GPP winner. That was annoying. And like the, the GPP winners, there's like, I don't think there's that many. But they had Dawson Knox, whereas me and like 100 other people had uh, Matt Collins instead. But I don't hate this. Again, two young quarterbacks, short week. I could see this. The question I'm asking myself in my head is, do I want to limit this to only one DST? I might. I think two would be too much, but I'm kind of okay with this as well. I think it's a decent build that we have there. All right, guys, that's going to be all for this video. Make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel. Trying to grow this channel up. If you guys could leave a comment, that would help out as well. Do appreciate you guys being here. If you guys want access to any of the tools that you saw in this video, head on over to 9to5sports.com. I just, I guess I only showed you the lineup builder. There is the NFL DFS cheat sheet there as well. Uh, included in the membership is all fancy golf tools as well well as prop tools for you guys if you guys play on prize picks underdog or make nfl bets all right guys that's gonna be all for today's video thank you guys for watching good luck and as always let's keep cashing